Thank you so much. Um, I'm a little bit nervous, I have to say, I've never been in a French meeting, let alone be what, a rally. <laughs> so this is new for me, um, um, uh, but I'm honored, um, and I mean that, uh, to be here, uh, to be part of this event, and uh, try to give a little bit, maybe a little bit of advice, or uh, um, uh, something you can carry along um, with regard to the European elections of next year. I've written a pamphlet, um, it's in, in Dutch of course, um, and uh, um, the, 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 thing, the title is about social justice in Europe, but it's also about the most important elections of next year. And I know it's very difficult to tell that in the UK. Uh, um, in the UK, people don't consider um, uh, that being the most important elections. And I have to say, and I'll quote him again uh, a little bit later, I was at the London reception yesterday, um, they told me the most exciting reception of the whole of the conference. And there was your leader, at Miliband, and he talked about next year elections and he fuck up the European ones. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so it's up to you, I think, um, uh, the people um, uh, uh, of, 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 uh, of Labour with a warm heart for Europe, although very critical um, to change that up to uh, next year. I want to give you, and I'll, I'm not going to use my paper, um, I'll try to do it if I make a lot of mistakes in English, you will forgive me, of course. Um, I want to tell you some of these elements of the pamphlet I wrote, because um, you must all know that it's much more easy to be an MEP in Belgium than being an MEP in the UK. Huh? Um, and I mean that um, in, in, in Belgium, people are most of the time, or used to be most of the time, pro-European. They, they're pro-European, they don't know why, but they think it's important, um, and they let Brussels do whatever they do. That is changing. It's changing in Belgium, it's changing in Austria, it's changing in all continental Europe. Um, it's as if we are heading towards the sort of public opinion you have in the UK. And I think that's disastrous. And we have to ask ourselves, how do we get there? Especially in, in countries as Belgium and Austria, because I think it's, it's, it's helpful also for, um, for the UK and the people in the UK um, with that warm heart for Europe. And I think I found some of the answers. I'll give you some of them. First of all, of course, um, since um, the crisis, uh, something happened in Europe. Huh? Normally, it's, it's, it's a political level that goes ahead, um, especially on climate, environment, and so on, all good things. Uh, but since the crisis, it's changed dramatically. From one day to the other, a crisis that has been provoked, not by the governments, huh? not by the public, um, but that has been provoked by the banks and the private sector, changed into a crisis of governments and debts, and so, the, the, the solution of that problem needs to be found within the public. Strange, eh? That's a typical ideological trick of, 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 uh, of right-wing parties and a lot of leaders in Europe. They changed a crisis of the private sector, the banks. We spent so much money in saving the banks, and then there was a problem of, of, of debt, and now it's the people that have to resolve that. And in resolving that, the only solution the European Union gave the last couple of years was austerity and reform. You have to think about the word reform. We're, we're, we're in favour of reform. Social Democrats are in favour of reform. But if right, left-wing parties use the word reform, they always mean flexibility in the labour market. They always mean lower the wages. See what happened in Greece, see what happened, happened in a lot of south, southern European countries and also in Belgium um, uh, uh, and other countries like France and Germany. So, you have, we have to ask ourselves what happened and how did we come, come there and also what brings the future. And if you look at the future, maybe it's important to ask yourself what Europe do we want? And is there such a thing as a Europe, I, European identity? It's an important question, especially in the UK, I think, and, and not very easy to answer. We don't have, um, like, for instance, in, in the States or, or even in China, we don't have that common story of where we come from. If it is a common story, then it is a lot of war. We didn't have that sort of revolution that took us to that common story. We don't have that. Does that mean, then, that we do not have common values? Yeah, I think so. If you ask people, think about European identity. I know a lot of people will refer to our history, to the monuments we have, to, um, uh, to the laws we had, the Roman justice, our history. But I don't think that our identity <coughs> is locked up 
in old paintings or monuments. I think it's very present and it's something completely different. Of course, it has to do with the values we all know, which are important in democratic worlds, such as, such as freedom, equality, social justice, solidarity. But I actually and truly believe, if you look to what makes Europe unique in the world, really unique in the world, that it is the social justice systems we have. Look, for instance, to the States, but also to other parts of the world. But let's take the States. In the States today, still 15 million, 15 million people are without health insurance, whether it's public or private. In Europe, that is considered to be impossible. We have healthcare system in every member state of the European Union. That's what we have. That what makes, that's what makes Europe unique in the world that is our social justice system and the feeling Europeans have for that social justice system. And you know what the clue is? Oh, one minute. You know what the clue is? The clue is that because of the policies of Europe the last couple of years, the one thing they did was abolish, the lower down that social system in the whole of the European Union. And that is the reason why in countries as Belgium and Austria, and I think so also the UK, and I'm absolutely sure that's your main task also in the UK, that's the reason why people do not support the European Union anymore, because our identity is taken away from us by that same European Union. And then we know what to do with the upcoming elections, whether it will be a referendum in the UK or not, what we have to do is to make sure that social justice is back, not just in blah, 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 because we always do a lot of blah, blah, blah when we talk about social Europe. We really have to take it up to the European agenda. And just let me give me one example, because yesterday at Miliband, a um, uh, um, uh, speech about the, necessi necessi the necessity, <laughs> sorry, the necessity to, um, um, uh, to um, uh, increase the minimum wages in, in, in the UK. And I'm quite sure that is really very important, but that, because I know there's still a lot of working poor in the UK, so it's, it's, it's crucial. But it will be completely useless, eh? completely useless, if you do not, at the same time, make sure that the principle of a minimum wage, namely the fact that if you go out and work at the end of the month, you have a decent income to get your children to school, to, to make sure you have decent food, that that principle is raised up to the European level and you install a minimum wage, the principle of a minimum wage, not the same minimum wage, but the principle of a minimum wage in European directives. And I think that's what we need.